Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have the latest from the live radar we'll then run through the UK Met Office run have a look at the precipitation and temperature over the next five days and then we'll have a look at the mid to longer range looking at the various models GFS, GM, Ethan DF and the ensembles as it does look like we are going to be having some very warm and dry weather into July it's looking likely now pretty likely I'd say that we do see heat wave conditions for some, i.e. temperatures exceeding those heat wave thresholds set by the Met Office, which do vary from around 25 degrees across Scotland to around 28 degrees across the southeast of England. I do suspect many areas will be breaching that um, for a number of days. Remember, for a heat wave, you need three consecutive days of above uh, above those heat wave thresholds, and does it likely we could be seeing these conditions coming up over the next week or two? We do have a little bit of unsettled weather to contend with in the next couple of days before it starts to warm up through the middle of next working week, and then it could be really quite warm towards the next weekend. So, the next sort of five to ten days is when it's going to really turn much drier and much warmer. So remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure you like and subscribe. And remember to follow me on Twitter as well, the link's in the description. So, if we do start on the live radar, you can see it's another day of sunshine and showers. We've seen a bit of a weather front progressing eastwards across parts of the Midland, central, southern England. And it's sort of petering out and we're seeing a few heavy lines of thundery showers um, moving in behind it. Further northwards, we've got a little bit of low pressure to our north and we've got a lot of showers spinning around it. But around these showers there's a lot of dry and sunny weather a lot of sort of pop-up cumulus clouds around and of course the odd heavy shower as well and some of these lighter patches of rain as well but most areas it's been pretty decent at least for a time today some areas yes have seen some precipitation but it's not been too bad for most of england wales and the republic of ireland um, but this pattern will continue over the next few days where some areas will be pretty decent some areas will see some quite heavy showers just because we have low pressure around however as i said as we head towards the middle of the week it will turn much warmer and towards next weekend could be turning hot now we're calling this around 5 p.m. So we are uh, just about over the peak temperatures of the day. And you can see again, it is pretty warm. Where well, we have that weather front, a tad cooler, more yellows and blues there. But to the east and the north, you can see these oranges, which is low 20s and around that high teens, low 20s mark, around 18 to 22 degrees. Across Scotland, cooler as well, but we haven't got that much warm air, to be honest. We're above average in terms of upper air temperatures, so it's never going to be too exceptional. But once we get above average, upper air temperatures, that's when we could start to see things warm up. But we'll see this continued high teens, low 20s over the next sort of two or three, four days before it starts to ramp up from the south um, over the next sort of five days or so before all areas are in that warmth within warm and dry weather within the next five to ten days. So if we do have a look at the UK Met Office run, have a look at what the precipitation and the temperatures are doing over the next five days, and you can see that heavy rain and that weather front moving eastwards early this morning, fizzling out, just going into sunshine and showers for this evening. Overnight, it does turn much dry across England and Wales, still some precipitation to the far west of Scotland, Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland, and for tomorrow afternoon, another day of sunshine and showers. Some quite heavy pop-up thundery showers there, but they are mostly towards late morning, early afternoon, and by middle to late afternoon, they look like they're going to fizzle out. Beyond that, as we head into Monday, again, another day of sunshine and showers, but those showers have shifted further northwards and lesser uh, number of them as well, and less intensity, and that's because the high pressure is building in. And you see by Tuesday, a little weather front pushing in, but sort of less showers once again, and by Wednesday, again, precipitation in the far north, that high pressure is nudging up from the south, so in the south, it is dry by Wednesday, and we can see that by putting on the pressure and you can see that high pressure at 1,032 millibars pushing in from the southwest, taking over, at least slowly taking over. And as I said, by the end of next working week, towards the weekend, that's when it's properly in control. Look at the upper air temperatures, much warmer conditions, 10 to 15 degrees A50 HPA will be pushing in from the west and the southwest, turning things much warmer and drier. If we do have a look at those max temperatures, as I said, it's going to be around that 20 degree mark for 
uh, max temperatures over the next couple of days. Some areas cooler than that, so around 15 to 20 degrees for slowly ramping up over the next few days. So you can see that this afternoon, those temperatures peaked around sort of the mid teens to high teens, maybe the old 21, 22 degrees in East Anglia and Southeast England. And as we're towards tomorrow, those temperatures will be slightly warmer more widely, around 18, 19, 20 degrees quite widely, and then at 21, 22 degrees, maybe even the odd 23 degrees. As we head through to Monday, more widespread warmth again, 20 to 23 degrees quite widely across England and Wales. Um, and again, could be seeing the ice age 24 degrees. And then again, by Tuesday, we can see 22 to 24 degrees, bigger area as it slowly sort of grows uh, in that area of warmth. And again, by Wednesday, again, 24 more widely and again sort of 20 to 22 degrees more widely once again and it's just these temperatures slowly ramping up and i suspect by thursday friday time we start to see 25 26 27 28 degrees and that's when we start to reach those heat wave thresholds and of course with high pressure stagnant over the top of us those temperatures will just remain slash get slightly more intense as that heat does build and i wouldn't be surprised to see mid to high 20s quite widely now at the moment we're not expecting any exceptional air masses so yes it looks like a heat wave a technical heat wave is coming on but it's not going to be anything too extreme we're not expecting anything in the mid 30s by any means any of that extreme hot weather that we have seen over past years it doesn't look like yes it will be very warm maybe hot but those temperatures peaking around 30 degrees nothing too much higher at this stage simply because the upper air temperatures don't look too much higher than around 10 to 15 degrees at entry 50 hp and of course, if you watch my N50 HPA temperature explainer, you see that in the summer months, we can add about 15 degrees onto that. So 10 to 15 degrees at N50 HPA is around 25 to 30 degrees at the surface. So if we do now have a look at the medium to longer range, looking at the GFS, GM and Eastern BF, you can see low pressure in control at the moment. You can those upper air temperatures, but they're not particularly warm. But as we run through the next few days, high pressure slowly builds in from the southwest. And said by Wednesday, Thursday time, it properly takes control. So right at the end of that UK Met Office run, we've seen this much warmer high pressure uh, extend in. And you can see it completely takes control by around Friday, Saturday time. Yes, it tries to get threatened by low pressure to the far north, which could bring a bit of cloud and precipitation to Scotland. But the majority have got hardly any isobars in there at all and it is very dry and warm and that just continues for a number of days yes signs perhaps in around 10 days time of low pressure trying to run in from the west but it's shifted further north to the center towards iceland so it could just be precipitation and cloud for the northern half of the united kingdom maybe only scotland elsewhere still warm and dry and high pressure just holds on eventually it could even migrate out more towards our west uh, sorry our east if it does that low pressure drifts to our west and it could start to pull up a southerly wind which could turn things very hot perhaps more towards 30 degree plus because if you do run it back and you have a look at those upper air temperatures 10 degree ice foam comes in we just keep it over the top of us for the next sort of week to 10 days and eventually potentially some very very hot air some maybe sort of comes up from the south you see 20 degree ice foam there sort of potentially getting to the far southeast and you have the 25 degree ice foam into parts of france and spain so incredibly hot air mass right in the longer run could impact the uk but at the moment the reliable time frame where we can say it's pretty likely to happen it just looks like those temperatures will be mid to high 20s maybe 30 maybe even low 30s in a few spots so very warm hot heat wave potential but nothing out of this world nothing too extreme so if we do now have a look at the gm see how that does compare out to day 10 got low pressure in control at the moment high pressure building in by around thursday friday time and it just stays in control very warm and dry and right towards day 10 we're still under high pressure yes low pressure trying to push in from the west so again scotland could go maybe slightly unsettled at day 10 with low pressure running in if you look at those upper air temperatures around 10 to 15 degrees at 850 hpa very warm and i run it back and you just see we are under that upper air temperatures consistently from around sort of day three day four to around day ten so a good five to seven days worth of very warm and very dry weather um so that's why i said it's likely to see heat wave even if it's not above heat wave thresholds at the start it's likely to see at least a few days if not three to five days within there that reaches heat wave thresholds for many areas
If we do have a look at the ECMWF, see how that does compare. Again, low pressure in control, but high pressure dominates around the end of this working week. And it just stays in control right towards day 10. That low pressure is nowhere to be seen, really doesn't really develop, and we just stay warm and dry. Again, I run it back and have a look at those upper air temperatures. You see very warm air mass moving in, 10 degrees at 50 HPA. We just stay in that very warm air mass. Maybe even wafting up warmer air, getting towards that 15 degree line, which would put temperatures as said, around that 30 degree mark, maybe higher, and yet, because it just stagnates, it just, it's just sitting stagnant over the top of the countries, so get a bit of stagnation there, it's possible that we can even exceed that 50 degree boost we would normally see with the AM50 HPA temperatures, just because the air just doesn't really move around, we haven't got much ice bars, doesn't mix, and we can see a look of layer at the surface that is very, very warm, that the sort of heat builds over a number of days. So there is potential to see very warm conditions here. As I said, nothing exceptional, no record-breaking temperatures at this stage, but just very warm, very dry, and potentially quite hot. Still dangerous, of course, high UV, and people can get very dehydrated, even if those temperatures are not out of this world. Still around that 30 degree mark, it is potentially quite dangerous. So yeah, we've got to keep an eye on this over the next few days, just to see, as we get into the shorter time frame, what the short range models have for those peak temperatures. I do think at the moment it's likely to be in around that 30 degree mark. And suppose if we do go into the United Kingdom, look and have a look at the two meter temperatures. You can see overnight it is 21 degrees, if I put it into the three hour increments. So we do run it back to the 11th of July. You can see that 27, 28, 29 degrees. And as I said, there's a low resolution compared to the, the high resolution models and most likely we'd see a bullseye area of 30, 31 degrees. This is why I said high 20s, maybe low 30s is the most likely temperature. And again, if I just run it back, even to the 10th of July, you see again, mid to high 20s, day before that, mid to high 20s again, if you look at the high resolution and run it back to the 8th, again, getting up towards the mid to high 20s again, we're missing 3 p.m. and it most likely will be 26, 27 degrees. So very warm, very dry. Now, if we do finish the video, but have a look at the ensembles, you can see if the next sort of three, four days we're below average in terms of upper air temperatures, and that's why, even though it's sunny, for many, we're not seeing any exceptionally warm conditions. But around the 7th, 8th of July, we start to get above average, and we stay above average. Now, it does make a bit of a difference exactly how far above average. The majority of the ensemble members are at least a couple of degrees above. If we're five, six degrees above, it could be very warm, maybe hot, 30 degrees more likely. If it's more around average or slightly above average, it could... Might, might only be 25, 27 degrees, 26, 27 degrees. So it is slightly variable in terms of those temperatures, but it's still very warm, if not quite hot. You can see in the longer term, why I said at this stage, we're not seeing anything exceptionally hot. There are some exceptionally hot runs getting towards that 20 degree mark, which would be mid thirties at the surface. It is uncertain. So I'm not really gonna overhype it at this stage because we do see this quite often when we do see some extreme runs until they come within the 10 day time frame, And until we see a little bit of consistency with it, I'm not really gonna say too much about those, but the potential is there that we do see this heat build. And if we do get a push, a plume from the south, it could go very, very hot, oppressively hot into that mid 30 range. But we're not seeing that at this stage, I must stress. Another important thing is it is very, very dry. You see hardly any precipitation there. Again, very, very nice. If we look at those two meter temperatures, again, you can see it rising towards the mid 20s, around 8th, 9th of July. So around, or around from around the 6th, 7th, it's gonna get towards the low 20s. And again, by next weekend, so 7th, 8th, 9th of July, um, it's most likely to be around that mid to high 20s. Again, these are low resolution ensembles. You can always add a couple degrees onto them for the surface temperature uh, or the peak surface temperature. And you can see they're all around sort of that 25 degree mark. So yeah, 27, 28, 29 degrees, highly, highly possible. And in the longer term, you can see uh, uh, getting above 13 again. We have to see how the heat does build as well. If we do finish by just having the ECMWF ensembles comparing the age of THPA temperatures from them, you can see again cool over the next sort of three, four, five days, and then rising well above average uh, for around the sort of the 7th, 8th of July. And you can see nothing too exceptional uh, in the longer term, but still very warm, around that 10 to 15 degrees at a drift HPA mark. So very warm and very dry. Considering we have over 50 ensemble members here, 50 lines in this chart, there's hardly any precipitation for London at all over the next couple of weeks. So very warm and very dry is on the menu for the weather over the next couple of weeks. So anyway, thanks for watching. Make sure you take the necessary precautions and stay safe with this warm. Yes, it doesn't look like it's gonna be anything too exceptional, nothing crazy, no mid to high 30s, not 
record temperatures but it's going to be sustained it's going to be very dry and it's going to be warm potentially oppressively warm if this heat hangs around for a number of days because inside temperatures inside houses will start to rise and will stay very high it's a very little cooling and it could get to a point where we're just seeing consistent high 20s low 30s which yes is an exceptional um written down or seen on a chart compared to something like high 30s but it can still cause issues especially if it is sustained so anyway thanks for watching hope you enjoyed subscribe if you're new and i'll see you again for another video See.